The Academy Awards, one of the most prestigious and important events for Hollywood and the film industry. Every year, studios go out of their way to campaign and lobby for their film to be picked, and branches of the Academy choose who makes it and who doesn't. It's an ordeal that can ultimately lead to some of the most heartwarming and deserved moments in film history. Uh, and also some stupid ones. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> some really stupid ones. But you said goodbye to grumpy and sleepy. You know what, actually maybe, I think the Oscars might not be as good as I've been letting on. Nevertheless, it's a very important time for the industry. There's a reason why movie studios campaign and pour all their time into even just getting the nomination. Because it means so much in the, the validation of their films. The Oscars are supposed to be about respecting film and how much time it takes every single person to make them. Um, unless your movie is animated, in which case, get the fuck. So, if you didn't know, I'm a massive animation buff, and I've been delving into multiple different facets of the art form for a, a good while now. Whether it be from video games, cartoons and anime, CGI, web creators, it's the thing that I'm, like, constantly trying to, like, learn about and experience the most. Another one of those categories, animated film, has grown way more prevalent to me in the past few years. Like, I, you know, I grew up on Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks classics, but I've really tried to reinvest myself into them in a more personal light. And of course, a part of that was with the release of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But even before that, with films like Coco, A Silent Voice, The Lego Movie, Your Name, and now, most recently, with Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, Across the Spider-Verse, Del Toro's Pinocchio, and Nimona, among others, of course. This self-resurgence has gotten me to look back at other movies from my upbringing that I found to be at that level of quality and enjoyability, and to look at more recent films that have been breaking the mold. You know, to, to really see the craft and passion that's gone into all these films. So that got me pondering. Critically, these films were respected, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you got like news outlets and critic sites, but there's also like the Annie Awards, which really seems to put quality first. The Golden Globes are, um... Well, yeah, maybe let's not talk about those. Uh, and that leaves the Oscars. No. The Oscars, or the Academy Awards, are notorious for the mistreatment and belittling of the art form of animation. And that all culminated in 2022's introduction to Best Animated Picture. Because animated films make up some of our most formative movie experiences as kids. So many kids watch these movies over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Mm. I mean, I feel like we could have seen that with 2021's kind of, like, really riding that line. And that is the power of really great animation. It shows you as a child that anything is possible. I mean, even the application of best animated film is kind of rough because it further causes this separation between live action and animated films. It further pushes the idea of animation being different from a regular feature film, and that just sucks. Obviously, I'm not trying to say that they should take it away or that it isn't this massive achievement. It just sucks that it's like the only one animated films ever seem to achieve. Other than music, but that's usually Disney. We'll get into that later. If for some reason there's anyone who's worked on animated films watching this, uh, let me know what you think of the award, because from an outsider's perspective, it really does seem like a double-edged sword, especially with the Wally debacle back in 2008. Basically, back in 2008, Wally was touted as one of the best films of that year, and people were genuinely considering it to be, like, the recipient of best feature. Um, and then it wasn't nominated. This, coupled with The Dark Knight's absence, led to one of the biggest changes in the history of this award. From 2009 and onward, Best Picture has had 10 nominees, which is double the amount from before. I will admit, that was a great move from the Academy. Um, less of a great move. There were two animated films up for Best Picture the subsequent years after, up in 2009 and Toy Story 3 in 2010. The reason I find this to be a bad move is because there hasn't been a single one since. It kind of just looks like an attempt to silence that part of the industry. Like, up, 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 go play with your toys in your little silly flying house, okay? 
Now, what about that generic apocalypse movie from Netflix people barely liked? Yeah, let's throw that one in there. Before I really get into this, I'm gonna shout out Schaeferless's videos on the Oscars. I watched them in the middle of writing this video, and now I feel bad. I swear, I'm not trying to yoink your idea. I just really wanted to research this and talk about it for myself. If you want another viewpoint, some different information, go check them out. They're the top links in the description. I also want to mention that I'm not super invested in animated short films, but like, that's my homework for after I make this video, so. Now I took a little peek throughout the history of the award, trying to see, you know, how they were announced, who was nominated, who won, look at the acceptance speeches. And while I don't want to bore you with like a, a big recap listing off a billion movies, I, I will tell you the most striking examples. I, I feel like it's only fitting to talk about the first award first. Nathan Lane, Timon himself, presented it with a quip about merchandising and the Weinsteins. Up until now, I thought Monsters Incorporated was a documentary on the Weinsteins. But, <laughs> oh, we kid the rich and powerful because we love them. Oh, God. Shrek ended up winning, and the award was overlaid with mention of its CG animation technology. And a quote from DreamWorks co-founder Jeffrey Katzenberg saying that this moment will be a benchmark for about a day or two. It's just a gorgeous little moment for the history of animation. Another nice thing about this year and some of the years afterwards were the character shots they added in. It really integrates the idea that these characters, these movies deserve to be here. Even if it was completely on the animators to do and seeing Jimmy Neutron boy genius in the Oscars audience was a little cringy. It just added this extra layer of quality to the presentation of it. Overall, it was an odd but nice start to the award. The year after, Cameron Diaz had a classy line that was really solid. Today's animation has reached such a level of sophistication that the children take their parents. This led to the award going to Miyazaki for Spirited Away, which was such a big moment. Then Robin Williams for number three with another banger of an introduction for Finding Nemo. Look at us, a San Francisco wedding cake. Back again, we got Robin Williams talking about how gay animated characters are. What about Donald Duck? Little sailor top, no pants. Hello? I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> You're welcome, Incredibles. Honestly, it's been a really good run of presenters, minus that just like out of the blue Weinstein joke. What at this point could go wrong? 2008 had an odd one where they faked people out by having Steve Carell pretend to announce best documentary which was a little rough. Jack Black made a joke the following year about how Pixar wins most of the time. Each year I do one DreamWorks project, then I take all the money to the Oscars and bet it on Pixar. And it became this self-fulfilling prophecy. Wally! Yeah! 2010 had a bit of an upgrade in multiple factors. They created short dialogues of the main characters of each movie and also expanded the nominations to five as opposed to three, which was really nice. 2012, was rough? You had Chris Rock up presenting the award, but his whole speech was about how easy it was to be an actor in animation. <sighs> yeah, man, come on. This guy who starred in a soon-to-be three-movie franchise where he once again plays a character using his normal comedic tone because he was part of a celebrity cast is telling everyone how easy it is to voice act for animated movies. When there's people who literally spend their entire lives trying to earn the respect and build up their reputation as an incredible voice actor, they, when they try to get cast into these big movies only to be rejected because a big mega star celebrity showed up, recorded a couple of voice lines, got paid a shit ton of money, and then left. No, no, you can't tell me that it's super easy to be a voice actor in animation. And that's not to discredit every celebrity voice actor, but for every 50 Chris Pratt Marios, you get one Jack Black Bowser. A call to any celebrity who's voice acting in movies. One of your inspirations should always be Robin Williams. The way he handled Genie, you know, only taking a small pay and asking for them to not use him as a marketing point for the movie, just so he could make something special for his kids, that's phenomenal. But to see someone at the most important night for film talk about how simple and easy people's passions and livelihoods are is just tone deaf. Sorry, Rango, it looks like it was a bad year to win. Also, back to voice actors, why don't they ever get recognized? Like, not only are they important to animation, but they're, they're literally everywhere. Why can't we talk about them? Please, recognize voice actors, okay? They deserve it. 
They add so much to world building, character complexity, storytelling, relationship development, charm, emotional beats. You get it, right? Two rough patches in 2015 with Dwayne calling animation a genre, um, but it was coupled with some like really nice compliments, so we'll just chalk it up to a mistake. But not Zoe's mistake. Oh no. No, no, no. That was his mistake! Why the fuck did Big Hero 6 win this award? I mean, like, it's not a bad movie. But, man, was it just not the best one on the list. The creators gave a really beautiful speech, and you can tell that they were really passionate, and they really enjoyed working on this film, but, like... <sighs> so were the others, you know? I'll talk about 2018 in a bit. Ugh. 2019, Spider-Verse's big, triumphant moment that was cut short, supposedly stopping Bob Persichetti's big thank you to Stan Lee, which, um, yeah, that sucks. Oh my god, that's awful. Uh, there's just a little calm before the storm in 2020, and we can, you know, skip past these two. And that brings us to the best presentation of this award in 2023. Guillermo del Toro's speech is so raw and beautiful, and you can really feel the passion behind him as one of the biggest supporters of this art form. But I also don't want to pass up Dwayne Johnson's introduction speech being, you know, a little cringy at first and then snapping into place with this dead set destination on making up for the prior year's letdown. For animation, it was a wonderful year in that award, but not necessarily in the rest of the show itself. Oh yeah, it's statistic time. 2023 saw zero nominations outside of Best Animated Picture. The last Best Picture and Best Sound Editing nominations were 14 years ago, Best Original Screenplay was 8 years ago, and every single nomination in that category has been entirely from Pixar. The last for Best Sound Mixing was 17 years ago, and there's only been one overall Best Sound nomination for the past 30 years. The massive gap in time between the Academy Fixing the Wally fumble and today where there aren't any nominations in anything except for music is rough because it shows you that they stopped caring again. Or, you know, maybe they didn't even care at all. I also think that it's kind of weird that in the years that Disney starts to kind of fumble the ball a little bit, the Academy turtles itself in when it comes to animated films. Del Toro's Pinocchio and Puss in Boots' The Last Wish? No other nominations. Rango? Nope. Spirited away? Nah. And I want to make it clear that as easy as it is to hate on Disney for big company makes same movie, they've made some of the greatest animated films spanning so many different eras. But it really does feel like there's some Disney bias going on. And that's because there probably is. When asked about it, the people behind the movies that get snubbed from nominations and awards don't really have great things to say, and ultimately it comes back to the Academy members themselves. There have been so many instances where we see people who vote for these films say that they haven't seen these animated movies. An entire art form, an entire mass of people who spend endless hours, you know, putting in their blood, sweat, and tears into these precisely crafted films, only for these people to say, no, because they don't have actors on screen. They're like, where, where are the people in this movie? These are cats. Cats aren't people. This isn't a real movie. There have been multiple quotes from Academy members where they say explicitly that they vote for the one that they saw with their kids. And guess which one that usually is? It's fucking Disney, because it's the name brand and it's the most accessible. It's always hard for indie films and experimental stuff to get the nomination, but looking back at even the most standout winners, which are Spirited Away, Spider-Verse, and Pinocchio, they aren't exactly these underdog films. And by listing those films, we've already gone through half of the non-Disney Pixar winners. And this ultimately is what makes the award a little depressing. The award for most has become about pining for that nomination, and then it morphs into this pessimistic shot in the dark for the actual win. I mean, again, Jack Black said it himself. Take all the money to the Oscars and bet it on Pixar. The general sense of disrespect and belittling runs in the entire opposite direction of what film is supposed to be about. Creation and, and making people feel. The only thing I feel when I read something like anybody who works in filmmaking, I feel like they're my peers. I don't think they look at me the same way, is melancholy. That was from the director of Klaus, Sergio Pablos. But nothing will boil my blood more than apart from this ballad from an Academy member whose vote actually counted in 2014 for Best Animated Picture, where they said in reference to the Lego movie, and I quote, 
When a movie is that successful and culturally hits all the right chords and does that kind of box office, for that movie to not be in over these two obscure freaking Chinese fucking things that nobody ever freaking saw, that is my biggest bitch. Most people don't know what they were. How does this happen? That, to me, is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. End quote. Those complaints were in reference to Song of the Sea, an Irish film, and the tale of Princess Kaguya from Japan, a Ghibli film. How? How do you just allow people to vote for, for an award if they haven't seen any of the fucking movies involved in the award? Fucking easily, apparently. Luckily, in a bit of better news, there have been more and more respected individuals standing up for animation. And with last year's presentation going as well as it did, there is no reason to give up hope here. However, I do still think it's helpful to take a look back at what was lost along the way. Yes, we're talking about snubs. Yes, we're talking about 2018. Whose idea was it to nominate The Boss Baby and Ferdinand? Like, maybe it wasn't the greatest year of all time, but like the Lego Batman movie, Cars 3, I've heard good things about Bird Boy, even a couple of all right anime films like Lou Over the Wall and Mary and the Witch's Flower would have been better nominations than them. Or I don't know, A Silent Voice, one of the most critically acclaimed anime films in the past 10 years. Or do Digimon Adventure Try 2 and 3, fucking uh, The Smurfs, The Lost Village, uh, Cargo? The Little Vampire 3D. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Okay, that's that's just disrespectful, man. And also the, you know, the Smurfs movie is like the only one they actually submitted. But like, dude, they should have submitted The Little Vampire 3D. That shit would have swept. Speaking of Lego movies, and not to agree with that just fucking utter trash of a human being, the Lego movie deserved a nomination and very well could have deserved the award. Like, I, I don't know, the Box Trolls and Big Hero 6 weren't my favorite films. Claymation's awesome, but I think the Box Trolls is my least favorite Lego film. And you know, B Big Hero 6 is actually just pretty generic. Here, to balance out the Disney hate, Tangled 100% should have been nominated for that award. The storytelling was wonderful and the, the technology with the hair animation was like astounding. Also in 2010, they should have nominated Megamind. Why, why did they, why did they cut it down to three? I don't, I don't understand that. It's kind of hard to fit your name in since 2016 was such a strong year, but it 100% fit in that list. A couple of Studio Ghibli films could have been nominated in their respective years, uh, with the two biggest ones being Ponyo and Poppy Hill. And to continue the anime discussion, uh, Paprika in 2006 is a no-brainer, and I've heard great things about 2019's Weathering With You. And no joke, maybe it's nostalgia, but I, the SpongeBob movie should have been chosen over Shark Tale, okay? That is just a better movie. There's been plenty of films that didn't get that nomination, and to the people that made those films, I bet it would have felt like a dream come true. I will say though, as time has gone on, there's felt like a lot less snubs and a lot more competition, you know? And to me, that's just really inspiring. It's incredible that more and more each year we're seeing too many good animated films, and, and now we can't really consider them to be snubs versus just decisions, you know? All of this cultivates into this year. 2024. How are the nominations? Eh, you know, they're, they're pretty all right. In Best Animated Feature, because for once again, that was the only thing animated films were nominated for. I don't even know what to say because like Across the Spider-Verse had incredible visual effects and score. Granted, I don't know if animated movies that aren't claymation can get best visual effects because they haven't been nominated for it yet, but the technical feats of the style meshing and these intensely creative shots deserves something, you know? I haven't seen it yet, but I bet the score from The Boy and the Heron was just fantastic. Overall though, in the category itself, I would say it's pretty damn good. The fact that we saw Nimona and Robot Dreams, which are in the complete opposite playing field of what the Golden Globes nominated, you know, Wish and the Mario movie. It's great and it really gives me confidence that the people voting for animated film watch these films, you know? And seeing Elemental up there, you know, it, it was expected. Not a bad film, just um, just kind of weak Pixar movie, you know, which is disappointing. I really feel like Suzume had a good chance to make this the first year that Japan had two movies on the list. They probably just missed it. Or maybe not, maybe the voters didn't know what this movie was. 
And to talk about our front runners, the boy and the heron and across the spider verse, I, I just it can honestly go either way. They're both they both seem like fantastic films. I, I've only seen across, but like either way, it's a win win. From here on out, all we can really do is hope that the award ceremony goes well, you know, as well as it can anyway, because they have had a lot of sour spots. Okay, I do not know how to get down, so somebody could maybe come. Last year went really well, so here's to hoping. To finish up here, I, I just want to say that however your viewpoint is on the Oscars or, you know, movie award ceremonies or films in general is, good cinema is good cinema. And discrediting anyone for any reason other than quality is wrong. So if you care about animation or the future of realizing films overall achievements, care about the Oscars. Not for stupid viral moments or controversies or the, you know, the usually bland attempts at comedy. Care about the filmmakers and creatives. The people who put their time and effort into making us feel something. Care about them being seen for all their hard work. Because at the end of the day, hearing phenomenal creators talk about their passion straight from their heart, it's what makes it all worth it. For me, anyway.